Art here. In this part 1 to the Blenders tutorials, I'll be covering how to use Blenders in Clip Studio Paint and going over some limitations they have so that you can understand the tool before you paint with it. CSP has these special types of brushes known as blenders, and if you're familiar with smudge brushes or even using your cloth to blend graphite or charcoal in traditional arts, these blenders work a lot like that. To show you how these work, I've laid out a bunch of two color sets with a standard hard brush. I encourage you to give this a try too with your blenders. You can choose whatever color pairings you want. This is just an exercise to familiarize yourself with the blenders you have and how they work because they are all different. And then I'll show you ways you can use them in your paintings in part two of this tutorial. When you use a blender, they stretch color which means they are going to pick up whatever color you touch with your brush tip and drag that. So you have to be careful about which color you're selecting and then from there it's a series of moving in horizontal motions to first create a value range between the colors and then the vertical motions actually blend the values together. So you move in either way depending on what you need. If you need more colors, make horizontal brush strokes. If you need to blend it more, make vertical brush strokes. I'm just going to repeat this through these color selections using the different types of blenders that I have and finding ones I like and seeing how versatile they are. I have both textured and soft blenders and I recommend getting ones with texture not just smooth airbrushes because airbrushes can wash out your work and make it look too soft or flat as they remove detail. Airbrushes are great for touching up but texture is what makes your artwork look more realistic. Everything in life has texture. And I really like these first two blenders that I have here on top for blending any type of material whether I was painting people or environments. On that note, some textured blenders are really decorative and painterly because they're meant for more abstract styles. Like these I'm showing you now that they can be a bit hard to work with because it seems like they don't want to create a smooth blend. And that's really because just making horizontal and vertical brush strokes aren't going to work with these. They don't blend like that. As you can see when I do that here, they're just layering, but they're not really blending. If you have any of these, I would suggest to try out making different brush strokes, such as for this Paint Blend 3, I could hatch it. And I would probably use a blender like this for a background texture, or if I was adding a stitch texture to clothes, or even trying to get that bristled line look for hair. Whereas Momo Smoothie, I could blot and create a type of abstract blend with it which could work for various things if you're an abstract painter. This is why it's so important to just play with these and test out your blenders and just find what works for you and get a feel for how these work. And I've gotten all these blenders for free from Clips Assets. They were part of other brush packs such as Ambelina's Doodle Pack, Momo's Blenders, and CY's Realistic Painting Pack. So if you like any of these, the links are in the description below. Now that I've tested out my blenders to see what they do and found which I like, I want to mention a few limitations that blenders have so you can hopefully avoid some struggles and frustration when using these. The first is to be aware of the quality of blenders you choose. And I'll show you what I mean by that with these two soft airbrush blenders. This Dessin Focar creates a smooth gradient that has a really nice transition to it. It's very smooth and clean and easy to use. Where compared to this blend, its softness is really exaggerated and is really hard to work with. It's blurring too much and it doesn't blend well. You can see it's splotchy and uneven, leaving blots of other values in my gradient. It's almost like it has too much water in it if you think of it from a traditional painting perspective that if I wanted to paint with this, it would really make my colors blotchy and messy as well, and my work would suffer for it. This would not be a good blender to use. That this is another reason why you want to test out your blenders and make sure they're giving you a good quality blend. The second limitation is to be mindful of your brush size. With the blenders I used previously, they picked up the values and maintained them very well that they created smooth gradients from one color to the next. But this paint blend too is not doing that. These two blended colors it created are different from the two values I started with. They're not layering or blending very well. And the reason why is because of the size of my brush. 
When I try this again at a smaller brush size, it creates a different blending effect that's more painterly. It kept the colors I had there before and blended them more smoothly from one value to the next. So if your colors are getting washed out or the values are changing drastically in your painting, try adjusting your brush size. The biggest issue I've heard with artists trying to use blenders is in the layers. Blenders only mix colors that are on the layer you're painting on. So if you have different colors on different layers, it's not going to blend those. You can see here the yellow and green are on the same layer, but if I put another color on a layer above that, it's not going to blend with the yellow and green on the previous layer. And I get this really weird separation in here. I'd have to first merge these layers together so all the colors are on one layer and now all of my colors will blend. And I'll be doing this in part two so you'll get to see what I mean by being more mindful of your layering. And the last limitation I want to mention is that blenders don't actually paint. They just stretch the colors that are there. You can't select a color and paint with them. Like I said previously, these are smudge brushes. When using blenders in your process, it becomes a series of using painting brushes where you'll go in and add values and then grab your blenders to mix those colors then come back in with those painting brushes again and paint some more, rinse, repeat. This can be an adjustment to get used to with switching back and forth between these tools, but you'd be surprised how quickly you can pick it up. So don't let it intimidate you. Blenders are fun to use and can make a difference in your work. Now that you know about how these blenders work and found blenders you like to use, let's head over to part two, which is linked below, and we'll get into how to paint with these. Thanks for watching and happy painting! Uh -huh.